This is the installation of the Reference 500 sound solution designed for the fourth generation Prius. Uh, this works with the base level uh, as well as the trim level with the tablet interface. Installation takes approximately three to four hours. We're gonna walk you through step by step. Before we get started, we're gonna be applying the parking brake, releasing the hood, and turning the steering wheel all the way to the right. We're gonna be disconnecting the negative terminal of the battery using a 10 millimeter. And then I'm gonna actually use a piece of cardboard to prevent the uh, terminal from connecting. We'll be taking off the passenger side uh, dash panel. Then we'll be removing a clip uh, behind the panel, releasing the trim for the head unit. We'll be taking off the hood of the head unit by lifting directly up out of its rested position. With the head unit hood panel, you'll notice that there is a locking mechanism that keeps the hood in place. Uh, you wanna twist this to release and then removing the two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, thus freeing the radio from its uh, rested position. We will then pull the panel out of its rested position and put a blanket down to ensure that nothing is scratched in the interior. Tuck the blanket into the radio cavity and rest the radio on the blanket. Remove the 10 pin and six pin connection from the back of the head unit. Prepping the pathway for the quick sync wire and harness. First, we're gonna go ahead and lift the threshold on the passenger side of the vehicle. It lifts up directly out of its rested position. With the kick panel, uh, remove the bolt by turning clockwise. Pull the panel uh, away from the passenger side of the vehicle towards the driver's side. If any clips stay in the vehicle, use a clip removal tool to put back on the panel in preparation for the reinstallation later. Remove the glove box by squeezing the sides and pulling down and out in one motion to remove. Quick sync wire and harness installation. From the opening of the glove box, pass the 10 pin and six pin male and female connectors to the radio cavity. Plug in the factory 10 pin and six pin connection to the quick sync wire and harness and the quick sync wire and harness into the factory radio. With the harness installed behind the head unit, return all panels, hardware, and clips back to their original locations. Remove the panel under the glove box by pulling down. Disengage the floor light by compressing the connection and releasing, then pull the panel away from its rested position. We recommend taking a picture of the assembly before removing. Start by disengaging the locking connectors on the left side. You'll notice that there is a locking mechanism that you press down and then it will slide out of position. Do this for all three of the far left connectors. Proceed with disconnecting the other connections to the module. At the bottom of the module, you'll find three clips. These require compressing on the back side of the clip to release from the assembly. Remove the hardware from the module. One 10 millimeter bolt at the bottom and two 10 millimeter nuts at the top. Position the harness in the kick panel location. Identify the grommet location. Remove grommet with hand or clip tool. When preparing to run the power wire through the firewall, take the factory grommet and do a pilot hole and then follow with a quarter inch drill bit. Pass the 10 gauge power wire through the grommet location and then proceed with running the power wire through the opening in the firewall. We're gonna be removing the bolts and all these connections throughout the panel. Once all clips and hardware are removed, move the wheel well liner from its rested position, revealing the power wire that's ran through the factory grommet. For best results, we recommend using something to fish the power wire from the wheel well to under the hood. Attach with electrical tape and pull through. Preparing the power wire path to the battery. Remove the seven clips on the front panel. Once the panel clips are removed, you'll be lifting the panel out of its rested position and running the power wire through and towards the battery terminal. Strip the power wire. Insert power wire into the butt connector and crimp. Use lighter or torch to activate the heat shrink as well as the built-in solder on the butt connector. Install the corrugated split loom over the power wire. Remove the 12 millimeter nut on the positive terminal of the battery. Install the OEM Audio Plus ring terminal and reinstall the factory nut. After running power wire with corrugated loom, reinstall panel with the seven clips. 
Do not install fuses at this time. Back in the interior of the vehicle, you'll be left with a 22 pin connection and the ring terminal for the ground. Amplifier installation. In the glove box area, identify the 12 millimeter bolt nearest the rear of the vehicle. With the ring terminal of the quick sync wire and harness, thread through the 12 millimeter factory bolt. Position the amplifier into location and return the bolt to its original location. Hand tighten it first and then use ratchet and socket to complete. Amplifier connectivity. Plug in the 22 pin connection to the main amplifier connector and the eight pin subwoofer umbilical to the subwoofer output connector. Return the electrical module back to its location behind the glove box. Return the factory connectors individually and the factory clips to their original locations. Reinstall glove box and kick panel in reverse order. Ensure that all clips engage as originally intended. This concludes the front half of the vehicle. Run the subwoofer umbilical to the rear of the vehicle. Follow along the factory cable. In many cases, you can lift the factory clips and run the umbilical cable through these locations. Pull the rear passenger side panel right under the vent away from its rested position. Lifting the weather strip would be necessary to give you clear visibility to the clip. Prep the cargo area. Remove all the cargo mats, the storage areas. You'll notice that there's four panel clips that are covering the battery assembly. Disengage these four clips using a panel tool. Continue the disassembly by removing the storage bins and then the 10 millimeter bolt holding the rear storage bin. Remove that 10 millimeter bolt, lift the storage bin out of its rested position, and then the rear threshold. With the umbilical on the passenger rear of the vehicle, use a fish line to run to the cargo area. Run the umbilical cleanly and neatly alongside the factory cables from the passenger side of the vehicle to the driver's side of the vehicle. On the driver's side cubby, identify the ceiling panel. Disengage the ceiling panel and run umbilical cable extension through this location. Connect umbilical extension to the main umbilical connection and ensure that there's no place for rattles. Optional subwoofer option. Installing the subwoofer system. Position the subwoofer system in the rear of the cargo area. Connect the eight pin subwoofer umbilical to the rear of the subwoofer and push subwoofer into location. Installing the front door speakers. Use a panel tool to remove the cover behind the interior door latch. Remove the number two Phillips screw behind that door latch. Lift the rear armrest of the door panel directly up from its rested position. Remove the window door lock control panel. You can use a panel tool or really just a finger to lift up directly from its rested position. I remove the two Phillips screw behind that door latch. Use a panel tool or your hands to disengage the clips behind the door panel. Start at the bottom, work your way across, and work your way up. The window seal has a locking mechanism that attaches to the door panel. We recommend holding with one of your hands the seam of the panel so that the panel does not split from itself. Pull with force gently away from its rested position. Remove the tension cables on the door latch assembly, white on top, the green on bottom. They will want to return to this orientation when you reinstall them. Disengage connector for the light. This will only be on the front doors. Using a 5 32nd drill bit, drill the factory rivets holding the factory 6.5 inch woofer in its position. After drilling, remove any rivet debris inside the door cavity. Using a rivet tool, install the supplied rivet fasteners to mount your OEM Audio Plus 6.5 inch woofer. Reinstall factory connector. Repeat the steps as with the front door for the rear door of the vehicle. Installing the dash one inch soft dome tweeters. Use a panel tool and carefully lift the dash speaker grill up out of position. Remove the two Phillips screws from the factory speaker and remove the speaker. Install the OEM Audio Plus one inch soft dome tweeter. Mount using the original bolts. Reinstall the dash speaker grill 
and repeat this process for the other side of the vehicle. Install the provided 20 amp fuse. Reconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Tighten with the 10 millimeter socket. This concludes the OEM Audio Plus Reference 500 installation for the Toyota 4th generation Prius. Start your engine, turn on your radio, and enjoy.